So would I recommend the Jiki Cloud Pro desktop laser? Oh, maybe. Hey guys, welcome back to my studio. This year marks a year with my CO2 laser and starting my small business. And I thought I would take some time to tell you about my experiences with the device. I know many video reviews here done on YouTube are often just short experiences with the machine, but after a year as a laser owner, I think I can provide an honest review of the machine, its pros, and its pitfalls. This is my own review of a machine that I purchased with my own money a year ago. I am not in any way affiliated with Chuiki, and they did not ask me to review their machine, but I'm going to anyway, just so you can make your own informed decisions if you want decide you want to purchase this desktop laser. Before focusing on the laser model that I have, I do want to point out that learning to you a laser machine regardless of which model and software you, you use there's always going to be a learning curve you're not going to get perfection out of the box even with the more turnkey model of the Glowforge, there's going to be a ton of things to learn and settings to figure out and that's because every machine is different and i don't mean just every make and model there are often individual differences between one machine and the next. And it's up to you to take the time to run test cut after test cut to find the right settings. And even these may change over time as parts start to wear down and eventually need replaced. Don't get frustrated if your project doesn't turn out the first time or even the first 15 times. What's important is you understand this is just part of the process. Just make adjustments and keep moving forward. After doing some research and determining my budget, I chose to go with the Juiki Cloud Pro. It's a 55 watt CO2 laser with a bed size of 510 by 300 millimeters. CO2 lasers are capable of cutting all sorts of material, including all colors of acrylic, wood, leather, fabric, paper, and can grave all of those materials, as well as other materials such as glass, slate, and even certain coated metals. Mostly I work in acrylic paper and occasionally wooden fabrics, so I can't speak to the other materials as much. I also wanted a machine that allowed me to use an offline software and did not lock me into an online subscription. I wanted a device that had rotary capability as well, even though I have still yet to actually set that up. The cloud model also has a pass-through slot to allow for larger material, though the location of the machine in my studio kind of limits its use. My initial impression of the machine was that it seemed built pretty well. It's got a metal exterior along with a glass top and features an emergency stop button on the front for easy access. There is one button on the machine which can be used to start and stop projects, particularly if you use their cloud software. But since I primarily use Lightburn, I really only use it when I need to emergently pause a project. The laser was shipped in a large wooden crate and arrived on a pallet given its large and heavy size. Unboxing this was a two person job because this machine weighs about 110 pounds. I did notice upon removing it that some of the antifreeze had leaked all over the bottom and I had to clean it up. However, I never actually found the source of the leak and I haven't had any problems since. In terms of the performance of the Jiki Cloud, like all CO2 laser, it cuts with hair-like accuracy, provided you calibrate the machine and your settings for the material. A number of frustrations that I read in Facebook groups and online is usually related to not knowing how this machine works. The machine does feature a camera to help with placement and if calibrated will get decent results, but if you absolutely need something in the right spot, it's best to measure and frame a job to ensure it's exactly where you need it to be. The same can be said for the cut materials you're using. Be willing to test cut on a spare piece of material so that you can dial in your settings. You may also need to recalibrate positioning after maintenance on things such as belts. I had a belt snap in December 
in the middle of a massive amount of ornament jobs and I replaced it with a spare part that I found on Amazon and when changing the belt it resulted in skewed shapes which made me panic a bit until I discovered that you could actually recalibrate the machine's axis settings and light burns after just doing a couple of test cuts. The cloud offers three options for software. Their online version, an offline Windows version, and connectivity to Lightburn. I have a Mac, so I can't speak for the offline Windows version, but I did not care for their cloud software. It felt very buggy and would frequently disconnect from the machine. I'm not sure if this is because of like a network issue on the cloud side or if it's more related to the hardware within the machine. But either way, I wanted to be able to use offline software and the one I chose particularly to work with is a almost industry standard known as Lightburn. Lightburn in and of itself has a learning curve, but once you get comfortable with the software, you'll find it's very powerful and has a number of awesome features, including things like vector drawing and even image tracing. It allows you to import both vector files for cutting and raster images that can then be interpreted for engraving. Most of the work I do, I typically set up a ahead of time in Illustrator and then export in an SVG format and import into Lightburn. The exact size of the vector file never seems to translate, so I always resize the vector design once I get it into Lightburn. It's easy enough to do, and there's a very convenient button that swaps between millimeters and inches since I often use both. I also like being able to break the designs up into different cuts by assigning them a different color, which acts as sort of a separate cutting profile. This is how you're able to send a job that includes both an engraving and a cutting in just one step. You can also turn off each color if you only need to run a portion of the project. There is one silly quirk about this machine and its integration with Lightburn, and that's the material height. Rather than entering in the height of the material, which is usually 1.5 to 3 millimeters for most of my stuff, I have to subtract it from the focal length of the lens. The Juiki Cloud comes with a 17 millimeter lens, so for 3 millimeter thickness material, I would need to enter in 14 millimeters for the material height. It's kind of backwards. And supposedly this was fixed in a recent update to Lightburn, but from what I read on Facebook's groups, it doesn't really work very well, so I've actually held up on upgrading. Fortunately, Lightburn allows you to create material libraries that saves all of the necessary settings, so once you have that set up, it's really just a matter of selecting the material you're using and assigning it to the cut. You'll notice that my material heights differ from what I just mentioned, and that's because I've made some upgrades to the machine to improve its functionality. The biggest upgrade I've performed is changing out the lens and its holder to this model from American Photonics. Prior to this, cleaning the lens required a lot of disassembly, which is inconvenient. Ideally, you should be cleaning your lens every couple of cups, and a proper clean was near impossible with this housing setup. The new model I have has a removable lens that connects magnetically to its holder, which makes cleaning much easier. I also chose to install a new camera as the built-in model's connectivity is just, it seemed very hit or miss as to whether or not it wanted to show up in light burn. I've had way better connectivity with this new model than I found recommended in the Juiki Cloud Facebook group. I should note that calibrating any camera in light burn is pretty much the definition of insanity, but unfortunately there's no way around that. Routine maintenance is about the same as any other laser cutter, regularly cleaning the lens and mirrors after every few uses, greasing machine parts, and refilling the coolant as needed. I also vacuum up any debris and dust with a portable vacuum that I got for Christmas. I recommend one with a crevice attachment. Keeping the honeycomb tray clean is also important and a bit of a job for me considering my use of laser max material, which leaves a sticky residue. But I found that a good power washing with some industrial cleaner usually does the trick. Now, wear and tear with any machine is expected. The laser tube has an estimated life of eight to 10,000 hours, depending on how you use it. So it's not needed a replacement at this point for me. I have had to replace my x belt axis due to wear and tear, though given the frayed appearance of it, I do wonder if a large flare-up might have possibly caused some damage that 
eventually resulted in us breaking. Chuiki offered to ship me two new belts for the shipment cost of $40, which I did have them do, but since I needed a belt much sooner with it being the Christmas rush at that time, I found one similar on Amazon that showed up the next day and was able to install that. And like I had said earlier, it worked just fine with me once I calibrated the access after the replacement. And honestly, that's pretty expected. There are some advantages to the cloud over other models on the market. Obviously, compatibility with Lightburn is a big one and its price. The flagship comparison is probably the Glowforge, and it's easily twice the cost of this model. And it is unable to be connected to Lightburn, nor does it have rotary capability. However, there are similar models on the market now, such as the Omtech Polar, which given how similar it looks to the cloud is likely made by the same manufacturer, as well as Xtools, more recent release of the P2, which is a little bit more expensive. However, you also get a larger laser cutting bed. Both of these models offer the option of using Lightburn as well. However, the weaknesses of the Juiki Cloud need to be considered. The software quirks and the finicky hardware can make things difficult, especially for more inexperienced users. Tech support also can be a bit difficult to get a hold of as they are based out of China. I have heard from other users and forums that parts are often needing to be replaced, even after having the machine only for a few months. Though again, this has not been my case, other than needing to change out the X-axis belt. It also seems that the cloud has gone through like unannounced minor changes over the past year because I've noticed that later models don't have the emergency stop button on the front and some of the users report changes in the lens holder design, which has proven to be a problem if they're wanting to change it out to the American Photonics model that I have that is way more convenient. Part of this could be them attempting to improve the lens holder as well as the air assist connectivity, which is connected to the lens holder, as the air assist seems to be one of those things that people will change out to an external air pump for better improvement on the laser. This is not something that I have done to my machine, partly because I'm not experienced enough to do the change out. So would I recommend the Cheeky Cloud Pro desktop laser? Oh, maybe. As someone coming from no background experience with a laser cutter, I was really quite intimidated by this machine and I definitely struggled for the first four to six weeks as I learned how to use the software, test materials to find the right settings and understand how to troubleshoot things. You have to be willing to make mistakes, sometimes even big ones. But again, that's true of all laser cutters. Could the Juki Cloud model be easier to use? Yes. Does it have a list of things that I think need improvement? Yes. Are there easier models to use on the market? Probably, but I don't have those models to try out, nor the disposable income to purchase one. I hope this review gives you a little more insight into the Juiki Cloud Pro and helps you make your own decisions in regards to purchasing a desktop laser. This CO2 laser has become a cornerstone of my small business and the designs and products I've been able to create have often left me speechless. It's hard to believe that a year ago I was struggling to tame this beast and now I make regular sales on Etsy. If you have any additional questions about the machine, please feel free to leave a comment below. And if you can help my channel out, I would love it if you would hit the like button and subscribe to my channel. Ring the bell if you want to be notified when I drop new videos. At this point, I'm shooting for weekly content dropping every Friday or Saturday. Have a crafty day, guys.